Good morning and welcome to Church Online Kilmarnock on this, the first Sunday in August 2023. Today we'll be hearing about the feeding of the crowd of 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish and we'll be encouraged to bring what we have to Jesus to be used in his service. Please join me in prayer. Creator God, we know that on this planet Earth there is enough and plenty for all. And so help us to be good stewards of your plenty, working with you so that all may be fed and all may be secure and all may come to know and honour you, the giver of all good things. And hear us now as we pray together 
in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Forget your troubles and just get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Sing hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. The sun is shining, come on, get happy. The Lord is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're going to the promised land. We're heading across the river. Wash your sins away in the tide. It's all so peaceful on the other side. Forget your troubles and just get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. Get ready for the judgment day. sins, when all my sins, when all my sins, my sins were washed away. Oh, happy day, what a happy, happy day. sins, when all my sins, my sins were washed away. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, what a happy, happy day. Let us rejoice. Happy day when all my sins, when all my sins, when all my sins, my sins were washed away, my sins were washed away, my sins were washed away. Please join me in prayer. O oh Lord God, our Father, as we come, your family, on this new morning, we come to worship you together. We come united by your love. And we pray, Father, that others will know that we follow you by what they see in our lives. And so, oh Lord, draw near to us and make us aware of your kindness and forgiveness. For we are thankful for the way that you welcome us. We come today, Father, aware of our own shortcomings and failures. And so, Lord, for the times when we've put others down, then we are sorry. For the times when we've forgotten what you've done for us, then we are sorry for the times that we have judged other people, we are sorry, Lord. 
forgive us and change us to be more like you. Lord Jesus, we confess that we usually put our own needs first. Burdened with griefs and problems, then we withdraw into ourselves. We fail to notice that others carry burdens too. And yet, Lord, as always, you are open to our needs. When you walked among us in Galilee, you knew grief for John and fear for your own safety. But still you welcomed the crowd who followed you, healing their sick, meeting their needs of body and of soul. And you set an example to your disciples when they would have sent people away and you enabled those humble, simple men to share in the miracle of your making. And so we thank you for your example of compassion and caring. In Jesus' name, Amen. We turn now to the prophet Isaiah and we read from chapter 55, reading at verse 1. Listen for the word of God. The Lord says, Come, everyone who is thirsty, here is water. Come, you that have no money, buy corn and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, it will cost you nothing. Why spend money on what does not satisfy? Why spend your wages and still be hungry? Listen to me and do what I say and you will enjoy the best food of all. Listen now, my people, and come to me. Come to me, and you will have life. I will make a lasting covenant with you and give you the blessings I promised to David. I made him a leader and commander of nations, and through him I showed them my power. Now you will summon foreign nations. At one time they did not know you, but now they will come running to join you. I, the Lord your God, the Holy God of Israel, will make this happen. I will give you honour and glory. Amen.
we turn now to Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 14 and reading from verse 13. Listen for the word of God. Jesus feeds 5,000 men. When Jesus heard the news about John, he left there in a boat and, and went to a lonely place by himself. The people heard about it, so they left their towns and followed him by land. Jesus got out of the boat, and when he saw the large crowd, his heart was filled with pity for them, and he healed those who were ill. That evening, his disciples came to him and said, It's already very late, and this is a lonely place. Send the people away and let them go to the villages to buy food for themselves. They don't have to leave answered Jesus. You yourselves give them something to eat. All we have here are five loaves and two fish, they replied. Then bring them here to me, Jesus said. He ordered the people to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up to heaven and gave thanks to God. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. Everyone ate and had enough. Then the disciples took twelve baskets full of what was left over. The number of men who ate was about five thousand, not counting the women and children. Amen. And thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word. Let's pray with the assurance that our compassionate God hears every prayer and every cry of our heart. Let's pray together. Generous God, we are overwhelmed at your love and provision for us. We thank you for the blessings in our lives too numerous to mention. We thank you for the strength we have in you and we thank you for the people around us who enrich our lives. Thank you for every opportunity and for the privilege of knowing you, loving you and serving you. Help us to live every day with a thankful heart for all we have, not because of anything we've done, but all because of who you are. Compassionate God, we often feel overwhelmed when we think of the needs of our world and those around us. But you know every situation, every person, every prayer, and we bring them before you now. We pray for all who are ill at this time and those who care for them. Give them strength and healing. For those who care for them, we pray for rest and support. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who grieve today. We are thankful for memories and for the promise that our loved ones have entered into your loving care. But we pray for those broken hearts left behind. Lord, would you comfort them? Lord God, we pray for all who find themselves isolated, those who feel lost, those for whom the challenges of everyday life almost seem too much to bear. Lord, show us where we can help them. Give them community around them. May they feel your presence with them. Sovereign Lord, we pray for our country and for all who call it home at this time. Especially those who find themselves forced to come here. Help us to be a good neighbour to all. May we truly reflect your love and live like brothers and sisters, caring for all. Help us to remember that we have more than we need. Help us to provide nourishment for others, like Jesus did, and give us the boldness to follow his example in any way we can. Lord God, we pray for your church. Help us to follow the path that you are leading us to. May we never lose sight of you on the journey, and may all we do be for the building only of your kingdom. Hear these are prayers in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
our message today. What's your favourite recipe? Because I'm sure we all have a favourite one. Maybe a cake or a sweet or a meal that you've perfected and just love to make. A recipe that you probably know off by heart without having to reference a, a list of ingredients or a recipe book. I was reminded by my son last week that the best curry he'd ever tasted is a curry I made and I made it on a boxing day with leftover turkey from the Christmas dinner. I followed the recipe precisely and it must have worked because it made a lasting impression. Sadly, I've never, never been able to replicate it since, but I'll keep trying. Today, we're focusing on the meal that Jesus produced with five loaves, two fish, and a heart for his people. And with those simple ingredients, he was able to feed a crowd of thousands. The feeding of the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish is a, a very popular biblical story. The early church certainly liked it. Did you know it's the only miracle other than the resurrection that is recorded in all four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And sermons by the dozen have been preached on it. Sermons about miracles. Sermons about Jesus' remarkable appeal as crowds trailed him right round the countryside. Sermons about Jesus' compassion. Sermons about our role in God's work. Jesus didn't hand it out himself. He organised it and gave the food to the disciples who then distributed it to the crowd. Sermons on the generosity and unselfishness of that one little boy who appears in John's account of the story. There are any number of sermons here, but the most powerful message is probably the simplest one, that they brought what they could to Jesus and he made a difference. They brought what they could to Jesus and he made a difference. But take a moment to remember the context of this story. John the Baptist had just been beheaded by Herod. And when Jesus got this news, we're told he went to a lonely place by himself. And it was there, while grieving, needing some precious time away, that the crowd pursued him. They wanted healing. They wanted to see more and hear more of this man who fed their deep spiritual needs and who touched their hearts in such a way that they were prepared to follow wherever he went. So they had followed to that lonely place where Jesus was. And at the end of the day, his disciples urged Jesus to send them away so that they could buy their own food. Jesus refused and said uh, to his disciples, they don't have to leave, you feed them. All we have is five loaves and two fish, they pleaded. Well, bring them to me, said Jesus. And when he had given thanks, they shared what they had. And there was more than enough for everyone. Lord, we've only got five loaves and two fish. That's the common response of people down through the years when we felt overwhelmed by the task confronting them. It's certainly the response of some churches today in the face of mission planning and reshaping and a shortage of resources 
and dwindling volunteers. Lord, we've only got five loaves and two fish. I think perhaps we all feel like that at times, inadequate, unprepared, ill-equipped, out of our depths. Times when we're asked to do something where we doubt our own capabilities. Times when, like those disciples, we too plead, Lord, we've only got five loaves and two fish. We all feel that way at times. The parents worried about guiding their children or grandchildren on the right path. The family struggling to cope in a financial crisis when prices are rising and their income isn't following suit. Lord, we've only got five loaves and two fish. And the rich Western world already struggling to balance budgets faced with urgent humanitarian crises. Lord, we've only got five loaves and two fish. Bring them to me, Jesus said. And there's the answer. For that's all we need to do. Bring our generous gifts. Bring what we have. Bring our meagre resources. Bring our limited abilities and inadequate skills. Bring them to Jesus and then allow him to make a difference and turn them into a feast. For at the centre of this story is a huge crowd of ordinary people who were hungry and whose hunger was fed, not just with bread and fish, for it's about a people with a hunger for God, a desperate need for healing and a keen appetite for God's purpose in their lives. And what they received that day was a taste of the kingdom, food for the soul and a whole new purpose to life. And we as disciples today, we only have to bring whatever meagre resources we have and offer them to Jesus and he will ensure that all are fed. Amen.